In this chapter, we're going to look at how we can analyze and define data for notification services, which will be used for the event notification classes, defining what the appropriate subscription options are for our subscribers, and finally take a look at some strategies for defining the schemas and at how they can be delivered across SMTP protocols or custom defined protocols. Notification services is really a pretty exciting concept. The idea of pushing information to your end users when they need it, how they need it, and where they need it. So it's pretty exciting to be able to talk about this particular section. And to do it, I wanted to go ahead and take advantage of one of the samples that's actually deployed with Visual Studio. And it is a solution that you can find out under, if you've done that in your installation, is out under your C drive, Program Files, under Visual Studio 2005, and, or excuse me, SQL Server 2005, and if you go down into samples, you'll see some notification services demos. So just kind of show that off again. If we take a look at the newsletter, we see it right here. Microsoft SQL Server 90 samples notification services newsletter. And this is an actual website, so you end up opening it up in Visual Studio, and that's why I, I kind of stepped on where I was talking about to find it. It's Visual Studio that opens up a sample delivered to you with SQL Server. So we'll go back in here to the solution. And there are several things that are part of this solution. And really what it, the goal is, is that you're going to have a way to subscribe to some services. And then you're going to be able to use a website. And let's get rid of the HTML and look at it graphically. To be able to see what your events are that you're subscribed to and decide if you want to schedule them or delete them. And that's where we're going to be going. It all starts off with the instance config file. The instance config file is going to be consumed later on, as we'll see, the end of these series of demos, of being able to create a notification service. And it ends up having a name and ends up being kind of getting a connection string, essentially, to our primary SQL server. The real meat is up here in another folder called the application definition. And this could be just in, in, you know, inside the root, but it kind of makes sense to bring things together. Because we're going to see a little bit later how our application definition is working even with locales. Because our end users are in different locales. So let's take a look at this application ADF, the application definition file. It consists of several different elements or nodes, dealing with the event classes, subscription, notification, and several others that we'll kind of look at. Right now, we're going to focus on just the event classes. The event classes are really not that difficult to understand once you've looked through them. We have a name for the events. These are the items that we want to be able to capture when someone makes changes. Our schema is going to be focused on a series of specific fields. The document type with the size of 200, a publish date with the date time field, essentially long, Category in Envarcar 100, title Envarcar 100, and publish URL Envarcar 100. So each one of these events are not really taking up that much space. The schema for indexing, we recognize that we're probably going to end up doing some in, uh, queries that are based on the document type. So we end up creating an index on this table from the application ourselves. Notification services is not going to make that assumption for you. You have to dictate it within this XML document. Then, when you want to be able to chronicle data, scroll this down a little bit so you can see it better, we'll actually create a series of events based upon the fact that if a table for chronicalized data does not exist, we'll create it and store information. We will set up a rule of when to do that or how. A scheduled events chronicle rule is basically insert into the chronicle table, select the five specific items from the newsletter events table, and put that in there whenever those items are not already in the events chronicalization. And it's going to actually be willing to wait about 10 minutes to get that work done. We could increase or decrease that action timeout. So that's our event classes, being able to define the fields that are associated with our schema of what we want to capture, 
doing an index on those events so that we can get through the data quicker. And then as things time out or have been used, we make sure that we chronicle them into another table based on a specific rule. We'll close some of this up. Close up the event classes and we'll take a look in the next demonstration at subscription classes.